looks like it's gonna let up. Do you think we ought to stop this thing? Hey, Dad. Yeah? Man over here? Sure. He'd really wanted Blake to book them on an organized group trip, but Blake had other ideas. Blake is uh, very independently minded and decided that, oh no, we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to be able to do whatever we want to do. Since he knew I'd made up my mind, there wasn't much he was going to say that could make me change my mind. Okay, Dad. Yeah. It would have been kind of nice to watch someone else do the hauling and shoving. Come on, Dad. You want to share this with ten strangers and a tour guide? Matter of fact, yeah. I had never wanted to, and still never want to go on a guided tour. Let's load her up. It was, you know, experience that I wanted to have with my father, just the two of us. Better get going, Dad. Just checking everything, ship shape. Where in the world did I put that lighter? I got it. Very repellent. Extra strength, very repellent. Almost anywhere in Alaska, you're going to run into many different types of wildlife, which includes bear, and of course, that's something that you always need to be prepared for. The gates of the Arctic National Park is spectacular but dangerous. It's home to hundreds of black bears and grizzlies, not to mention roaming packs of wolves. It's 13,000 square miles of near untouched wilderness. Father and son have no way of contacting the outside world. They've packed no radio or mobile phone. Blake's itinerary has them traveling south by raft down the Koyukuk River to the town of Bettles. It should take around six days. Let's go! We commented on the way down the river that it wasn't it great to be the only ones on the river, the first ones on the river that year. And uh, there was a reason, as it turned out. They'd been rafting for just a couple of hours when they noticed that the river is changing. Blake, ice. Oh, yeah. Thought it would all be melted by now. Yeah, me too. For six months of the year, the rivers are choked with ice. During the summer, it all melts. But this early in the season, some patches have yet to thaw. The longer we floated, the more ice we actually started to encounter. It doesn't look like it's going to let up. Do you think we ought to stop this thing? The current's picking up speed, and Blake struggles to control the raft. I kept trying to look around the corner, hoping, hoping to find you know, wh which way we were going to be going. And that's when I realized that actually we didn't uh, have a choice of where we were going. The men are at the mercy of the current. We're going to have to pull in and stop this. I'm sorry, Dad. I can't slow it down, though. It was sheer panic at the time, and it happened so quickly, there wasn't much time at all to think. The next thing I actually remember was being pulled right underneath the ice. There was so little time to to realize what had happened, except that it was a real problem. It wasn't long before we came up in essentially an air chamber underneath the ice. The air pocket saves their lives, but the ice shelf could stretch on for miles. I remember looking over at my father, yelling at him. Blake uh, yelled. Dad, I'm sorry. Of course, it wasn't his fault. Give my hand. Blake manages to grab Neil's hand. Hold on. But the current's too strong. Dad. 
His dad is swept away beneath the ice. The men are spat out from under the ice shelf, but their ordeal isn't over yet. We were being carried rapidly towards the second ice shelf. I saw it coming. I reached up and grabbed it to try to prevent from going under it. Of course, the river was such that I was carried underneath. The roof of this ice shelf is even lower than the last. And the second ice shelf had no room to breathe. I really thought I had taken my last breath. My father and I both ended up um, with a lot of abrasions to the top of our heads because we kept trying to come up to the air that we were hoping was there. I've never thought of a worse way of dying than drowning and, and was certainly thinking that uh, that is how I was going to die. After being under that water for what seemed like an eternity, I just remember popping out, taking in a nice big breath of air. At this time, I had no idea where my father was. He had been pushed up against something and trapped. to face my mother and the rest of my family, letting them know that my father had perished, you know, when, when I had made it. And the next thing I remember seeing was his head above the water. The powerful current is sweeping Neil away. It didn't appear like he was making any attempt to get out of the river. And for all I knew, he was injured and couldn't. Neil's disorientated, but somehow he catches hold of a rock and hauls himself out. Blake knows that his dad has got to get to shore fast before he's paralyzed by cold and shock. And Blake, in the meantime, is yelling at me, and I can't hear him above the roar of the river. So eventually, I managed to get my breath long enough to tell him to shut up. Will you let me speak for a minute? Blake was telling me that I had to swim over to him, which was the last thing in the world I wanted to do. Getting back in the river is dangerous. But Blake knows it's his dad's only chance. Come on, Dad. You can do it. I'm so sorry, Dad. It's okay. It's okay. It was just, just bad luck. Bad luck. As a doctor, Blake knows that his dad's in the first stages of hypothermia. I thought you were gone. The second I got him out, I realized he was shaking uncontrollably. It was mild seizure-like. Blake's desperate. All their spare clothes were lost in the accident. Then he remembers something. The lighter he stowed in his life jacket. It didn't get washed away, but it's soaking wet. When I pulled that lighter out of my pocket and hit the button, 